Let's start this episode off with a little word association. When I say the word pumpkin, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Is it Halloween? Or maybe even pumpkin pie? What about the word sports? Does a particular sport like football, basketball, or baseball immediately come to mind? How about the word love? Okay, well, maybe that's too much of a reach. Let me try one more. How about the word bureaucracy? Chances are the word bureaucracy doesn't evoke feelings of efficiency, competence, or even effectiveness for that matter. In fact, we usually associate bureaucracy to be the exact opposite. We've seen firsthand the results of bureaucratic systems in our schools, businesses, and even government. But what if I were to tell you that bureaucracies may not be all that bad? What if I told you that the term bureaucracy actually is defined as the exercise of control on the basis of knowledge? You see, originally, bureaucracy developed as a reaction to the personal subjugation and subjective judgments of earlier administrative systems. Instead of a society of laws that were based on rational and logical judgment, many countries were governed by monarchies or dictatorships that imposed their will on others. And because of the fact that birthright was the sole determinant for who could next occupy these positions, important factors such as education, skills, abilities, and experience were ignored. It was because of this that a German sociologist by the name of Max Weber developed what is referred to as bureaucratic management. Weber's work was prescriptive in nature, meaning it was describing an ideal system as opposed to one that currently existed or would ever possibly exist. And the underpinning of bureaucratic management is that managing based on rational legal authority, which stems from rules and other controls, was more effective than managing based upon subjective criteria such as favoritism and nepotism. In light of the prescriptive nature of bureaucratic management, Weber would go on to present several essential characteristics of an ideal bureaucracy. The first characteristic was the division of labor. A key component to Fayol's 14 Principles of Management, the division of labor focuses on the practice of specialization. By dividing jobs into a smaller set of tasks, we increase efficiency as workers only perform the tasks that they are most qualified for. The division of labor also allows management to clearly define what workers are responsible for and ultimately who has authority in an organization. The second characteristic of a bureaucracy is the presence of a managerial hierarchy. All organizations should clearly denote positions within the organization and how they relate to one another. This chain of command, often illustrated through an organizational chart, shows positions from the highest level of the organization to the lowest. This is the equivalent of Fayol's scalar chain that he referred to in his 14 Principles of Management. The development of a chain of command ultimately leads to better communication as employees have an understanding of their role within the organization as well as those around them. The third characteristic of a bureaucracy is formal selection. In response to the presence of favoritism and nepotism in traditional systems, Weber believed that ideal bureaucracy was one that should select employees based upon technical qualifications. And really, isn't that how employees should be selected? Isn't it in the best interest of the organization to have the most knowledgeable, most experienced, and most skilled workers at all levels of the organization? By hiring and promoting employees based upon merit, you not only benefit the organization by having the best workers available, but you also reward workers by recognizing them for their efforts. The fourth characteristic of a bureaucracy is career orientation. In order for the organization to run efficiently, Weber believed that employees should be career professionals rather than politicians. This was to ensure that assigned duties were performed well, regardless of outside pressures, and also to ensure that operations ran smoothly even during elections. Employees were to be encouraged to look forward to a lifelong career with the organization and should be provided with some layer of protection from arbitrary termination by management. The fifth characteristic of a bureaucracy is the establishment of formal rules. 
These formal rules should apply to all employees at all levels of the organization with no consideration for employee rank or status. These rules were also meant to be written down so as to ensure that they could not be misrepresented. The sixth and final characteristic of a bureaucracy is impersonality. Weber believed that the rules and other controls that were previously established were impersonal in nature. Acting impersonally refers to avoiding the consideration of personality as well as personal preference when deciding how to administer certain rules and other controls. Rules should be applied uniformly to all members of the organization with no special treatment being provided to any one person. Remember that Weber envisioned bureaucracies as a response to the subjective nature of monarchies and dictatorships. So it should come as no surprise that eliminating individual discretion and focusing on objective, rational legal authority was a priority to Weber. Together, these six essential characteristics make up Weber's view of an ideal bureaucracy. Although different from today's interpretation, Weber considered bureaucracy to be the most efficient method of organization. With that being said, Weber did conclude that bureaucracy also contains several disadvantages, which of course seem to be common knowledge in today's society. Despite this, Weber's work is considered to be an essential component in modern societies today and resulted in a great deal of research in the area of organizational theory. Well, that's all for this video. In our next video, we'll discuss the general environment, as well as how the general environment impacts the way that businesses operate. For questions, please leave them in the comment box below, and I'll do my best to get back to those in a timely fashion. And remember to subscribe to Alanis Business Academy to have our latest videos sent to you while you sleep. Thanks for watching.